All right, a couple hours later, how are we feeling about this one, Bears fans? Way to go, Matt Eberflus. Way to go, Matt Eberflus. But how are we feeling about Caleb Williams? Because I'm seeing it on Twitter. I'm seeing it in chat forums. I'm seeing it even on the Bears press conference chat bar on the side. People ragging on Caleb Williams. And yes, I'm going to hit this square on the head right off the bat. Caleb Williams said he audibled out of the play that was called. They were going to run off of Larry Borum's hip, run down, and be able to get a first down. That's before the sack. That sack happened. You're way out of range there. So he, he called plays out of that. I'm going to point out in this video, here's from Carl Thiance, my podcast. He, re, he reposted this. This is from Bleacher Report. The Bears didn't call a timeout. Big, wide open eyes. Big, wide open. Carl and I kind of chatted about this a little bit. And anybody who doesn't see it this way, open your eyes. Open your freaking eyes. 34 seconds left. Right here it shows 33 because this is when it's done. But at 34, they could have called timeout. There's no other option at this point. You are an NFL head coach with zero situational awareness. At this point, you're sacked at the 41-ish yard line. That's a 58-yard field goal. That is completely out of range for Cairo Santos. He is not hitting that field goal. You're at third and forever, okay? There's one option here. That's it. You call timeout, and you play call two calls up. 34 seconds is plenty of time. Even if it's 33, if you don't get a timeout until 33 seconds, you have two plays you can run there. Number one, you get it across the middle wherever, on the side, wherever. Wherever you get it, you get enough yards to be able to kick the field goal. You can then rush the field goal unit in with that much time. 20 seconds is plenty of time to get those guys in there, get it set up, chip shot, tie the game, go to overtime. If you incomplete pass, you have a second play call called up, and the clock stops because it's incomplete. You can then hit something on the sideline for a first down, plenty of time left for that, or you go for the end zone. Either way, you've got options. Likely, you're going for a first down on the sideline, and you have plenty of time. Even if you don't reach it with that much time and you're still getting the first down, you can get up there and clock it to kick a field goal. Plenty of options. But the coach the Bears have, Matt Eberflus, is the most situationally unaware coach in the entire football league. He showed that it, he showed it last year too against the Browns, against the Broncos, several times against the Lions. He's shown it this year now several times as well against the Packers, against the Vikings, against the Commanders, and now against the Lions. Our division on all three times he's shown complete lack of awareness. So no, this is not on Caleb. Caleb is still the quarterback that's ascending and moving forward. Right now, Caleb is on pace for 3,700 yards. These are the Bears' rookie records, okay? 2,193 is the rookie record. 11 is the rookie record for touchdowns. So yards, touchdowns. Caleb, 2,193 is the rookie. He's now got 26-12 after this last game. 14 after this last game. He came in tied for the rookie record at 11. He had three this game. He's on pace for 20 touchdowns and 3,700 yards passing. The Bears' records by any quarterback... 38-38 for the year, and 29 touchdowns for the year. The big black eye on the Bears is quarterbacks. We've never had a 4,000-yard passer or a 30-touchdown passer. Caleb's on pace for right now, 3,720. If he keeps up what he's been doing under Thomas Brown, he's on pace for 3,900 yards, one big game, and he could cross that 4,000 threshold. Or he's on pace for 23 touchdowns, a couple big games. If he averages three or four a game, he could get up to the 30, but it's going to take some huge games on Caleb's part. So is this on Caleb? No. Caleb's on pace. He's doing very well. Anybody who puts this on Caleb and not on the coaching staff doesn't understand rookie quarterbacks and what he's doing to march down the field for this team. We were down 16 to nothing at halftime. In the second half, Caleb threw for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. He's not turning the ball over while he's commanding presence on the field. His teammates clearly respect him. And if you didn't see, Keenan Allen, after the game, said, I feel like as players, we did everything to win this game. As players. That is a clear and direct shot at Matt Eberflus. Shots fired. He's lost the locker room. He's lost these guys. He is done. He needs to be out. He needs to be gone. Caleb, not the problem. Caleb understood the situation at hand. He tried to audible out. He tried to make it work. As a head coach, it's your job with 34 seconds left to say, timeout, let's go over this. Let's take a breather. 
Let's take a break. We have one timeout. We can't take that to next week. We've got this timeout. 33, 34 seconds left. Here's what we're going for. Cross the middle to DJ Moore like last week. You guys get up. You throw it. You get it. It's at the 20-yard line. It's at the 15-yard line. Get off the field. Field goal unit's coming in. If it's incomplete, we call up another play. The clock is dead. We get to the sideline. We get 15, 20, 30 yards off to the sideline. Get a first down. Get the field goal unit in. We get something across the middle. We clock it. There's so many options here with 34 seconds left. I said it direct on the live. Two minutes left, 50-yard line. There's no excuse for why we did not win this game. Is this on Caleb? 0% in my book. 0%. Tell me what you guys think, though. And until next time, bear down.